We are live, like capital letters, L-I-V-E. L-I-V-E. Good. I feel like I have to do that now. I have to always put like capital letters to show live, not live. <laughs> hey friends, Paul Christopher here at Gravity and Auction Fitness alongside Dylan Foss. How are we doing today? Good to see you guys. Is this our fourth or fifth installment of Turf Talk Tuesday? I've lost count. That means we've done a lot. We're doing all right so far and we appreciate your following. Um, once again, 10 to 15 minute conversations about random important subjects within the fitness realm and industry. Today's a really enjoyable one that I think is important. What do you think? Uh, I think it's a super valid discussion and I think that's why we're having it. You concur my think. Yeah. Good. <laughs> awesome. Today's topic is the difference between results-based gyms and benchmark-based gyms. Perfect. Yeah. Give me some initial thoughts. Um, I, I think it's very easy to see results, but uh, they can be skewed. If you've watched some of our previous uh, Turf Talk Tuesdays, you'll kind of get some insight and maybe some early intel into what we might be diving into too. Yeah. So let's talk about um, results, okay? So you walk into any results-based gym or any gym, LA Fitness, Gold's Gym, um, even on a boutique end, any place that might be warehouse-based or boot camp, right? Um, group training, interval circuit. You walk into the gym, you become a member, and you hope to get results. So what are some of the classic results we hope to gain when you walk into a gym? Um, Increased skeletal muscle mass, decreased body fat percentage, duh. Um, increased cardiovascular endurance. How about greater flexibility or mobility, right? Those are the standard ones that everybody wants for overall general wellness. But how do you measure some of those data points? How do you quantify those improvements? And that's where facilities that cater to benchmarks using data points or basic information when you first walk in can now basically better measure your percentage change or your overall improvement during the time you've been a life member there, right? Yeah, I think with results, you'll hear words like, you know, I want to uh, lose some weight. I want to uh, look a little bit better, feel a little more confident. I want to- I want to get toned. I want to be more toned, right? right? So how do you measure tonus? How do you right. measure that? Right, yeah. exactly. Well, the, the word tone within fitness actually has no scientific application. So when you hear someone saying, I want to get toned, that's the mark for a whole other Turf Talk Tuesday. Don't you worry about Without that. Without a doubt. Exactly. So we love to say here at Grabbing Auction, how do you know where you're going if you didn't know where you came from? Pretty profound. Pretty profound. It's very useful and just understanding that you have to know where you are at that point, where you were previously, and where you want to go in order to have a clear vision of what to do in the, the meantime. Well said. So how do we know where you're starting, okay? So we have some simple things. We break things, uh, our, our programming down, into basic dimensions. So in the review of this conversation, we're gonna talk about how we would benchmark someone from personal training. How about if they were an athlete? How about in our special programs? And then what our outlook is for driving action come 2021. So let's talk first about personal training and some metrics that we take for someone coming in, walking in the doors for individual attention. Take it away. So with personal training, uh, one of the first things that we always do is have someone step on the in body, which if they watched one of the previous Turf Talk Tuesdays, with the regular weight scale versus the in body, you can see a large difference that we like your body fat percentage, things like your total water weight, things like your actual weight, your body fat percentage, like I already said, and skeletal muscle mass are probably the two most important things that we look at. Though. You're getting a ton of data with a quick 30 second test yeah. on a really fancy schmancy scale. And, awesome. and uh, aside from that, we also can take blood pressure, right? Something that a lot of people- How many places don't do that? Uh, most of them, except when Shame. you go to the, uh, the doctor. Exactly. But what are they not measuring? Your body fat percentage. Exactly. All of that. So we're doing both of those. Things. Exactly. Okay. And then aside from that, we also do on the fitness side and in those metrics, we do a movement script. Of course. So when we start off with the personal training client, we know exactly where we are starting from. We know what to work on to get where we want to be. Absolutely. So we can do things such as um, performing an overhead squat using a dowel or a broomstick. We like to take people through lunge and crawl patterns to measure both their hip stability and their core stability. Those are things that don't have actual tangible data um, numbers, but we just basically are seeing them move. And through that movement screen, we're, they're trying to pass our visual test of stability in two different areas. And as, as professional analyzers of movement, we can definitely see how that improves and they feel those results as well. But things like the blood pressure, things like the body fat percentage and everything on the in body, those are our benchmarks. We want to hit certain levels and certain points. Absolutely. Some of the next things that we do with the personal training client also segue into athlete testing, which we get into in a second. So how many push-ups can you do with your own body weight? And if you're doing them, 
Are you doing them with good form? A push-up should be considered a dynamic plank and should have some level of stability during your repetitions. How about even how many, how much, um, how many pull-ups can you do with a TRX, chin-ups, or maybe even a simple isometric ring hit? So those are some strength measurements. From a cardiovascular standpoint, we could take like a thousand meter row and see how long it takes you to row a thousand meters, or even giving us your max effort one minute on a reversal climber for more metabolic output there as well. So now we're gonna talk about athlete testing. So through our doors, we get, we get requests all the time, whether it's Johnny who's 13 years old. In fact, tomorrow we have a baseball team coming in and a bunch of 13 year old little leaguers. And then we also have professional athletes that come in, professional beach volleyball players, basketball players, hockey players. So no matter what, the principles hold true as to what we're trying to measure with an athlete. And we have nine basic measurement points. Um, we measure uh, basically hip stability, Can they see core this? stability. We measure Sweet. their strength. We measure their, um, their power oh, output, something as simple as a broad jump, jumping from here to there. We will measure their agility and time, measure their speed on our curved treadmills, and then measure their cardiovascular output. So with that, our focus is when somebody comes in as an athlete, our goal is to just improve the athlete. I'm not here to make them a better basketball player. That's what their coach is for. We're here to, to improve the athlete. Bigger, faster, stronger, one that can endure more cardiovascular ability and have more core stability. So we're here to improve the athlete, and we have nine basic tests in which we get their beginning data. And then when they're ready to go off and leave us for the season, we retest those same nine measurements and see their overall change. We've had some massive success with our simple testing program through athletes, for sure. Talk a little more about Good to Great, our amazing program, Good to Great. So Good to Great, which is what we do at the beginning of every year, is uh, exactly what it sounds like. It's benchmark based. You're going from good benchmarks that you start at to great benchmarks when you finish. It's a six week program. We tackle everything from nutrition to you know physical ability. And uh, not only that, but those things like the in body, blood pressure, all those things, we attack all of them. And we do it in a big group. You can get a lot more done when you have a cohesive group working together towards a similar goal. So good to great, it went super well this year. We had a lot of awesome people yeah. uh, transformation. Yep. And uh, we are also going to be, you know, moving that into kind of our broad picture with... Don't give away too soon, bro. Our, let's, mean, let's, talk let's talk about this sweet board. Let's talk about sweet board. So here's an example. We talked, we mentioned good to great. So we had everybody who signed up. We had about 30 to 40 people signed up in January. Yeah. And we took them through um, six basic tests. So we had a mix of what's your 1,000 meter road time? How far can you broad jump? How far can you throw a medicine ball? What is your repetitions of hex bar deadlift at 100% of your body weight? So if I weigh 165, how many reps of, how many reps of deadlifting okay. hex bar 165 can I do? And then we took 25% of your body weight for max reps of bench press. So we had six data points and we had everybody go through it day one. Now, each of those tests, they each had their own focal week over the course of the six week program. So if we had deadlifting, guess what? Week one was improving your deadlifts. So they had two, um, accountable exercise they had to do around classes. When it came to rowing, they had two accountable workouts for rowing. So multiply that to all, towards all six, six motions. At the end of our six week good degree, good degree program, we retested the same things from day one and we had some pretty profound success. People improving massive number of repetitions of their bench press, their hex bar, trimming down off the 1000 meter row time. So in this pilot project of using the good to great attendees, we use that as the big picture for what we're going to do in 2021 at Gravity and Oxygen. So based upon this pilot benchmark program, we're going to take the entire membership through something similar to the longevity of their life cycle. Now another miniature pilot project we have coming up in a month, and that's called No Bull. Absolutely. No, no bull? No bull. Is there a, do we add a word to the end of the bull? We're going to no, call we're it. Gonna, no, 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 no. We're, we're going to keep it just that no bull. Sorry, guys. No bull. Right, right. So no bull is uh, starting September 12th. All right, I'm excited for it. Mark uh, the date. Yeah, so we do no sugar, no alcohol, no processed foods. You mean no fun? No, that's a lot of fun. Okay. When you do it with people and you have a goal that you're striving towards, right? You want to hit those benchmarks. So let me get this straight. So September 12th, a 30 day program, yeah. no sugar, yeah. no alcohol, no processed foods. And we're going to do some other performance tests with them as well. Absolutely. Very cool. So once again, we're going to take their in body measurements, yeah. right? We're gonna give you some performance things to do in the beginning, and then we'll retest you in 30 days. But they don't have to always just be in the gym to do this. No, What's no. a special fact for So this year we're gonna be able to do this virtually, all right? And if we are not here to get your in-body, we have some other metrics, a great way to measure metrics um, outside of just getting all those data points. If you only have your weight, 
is to also get measurements of your waist, your thighs, your biceps, your chest, all of these different things. So that's gonna be a great way to really just understand how you can maybe not lose some weight, but lose a lot of inches. Right. Or you can gain some inches in muscle, but lose body fat. Right, so, so changing your clothing size is a sign of success as well. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Cool, so once again, good to great, something we've had long standing at Grabbing Auction. So this year we went benchmark and it was amazing. And then we're gonna do another miniature version over 30 days with the nutritional focus in September. And then looking over on the outlook, um, the, the bigger vision idea of Grabbing Auction 2021, we're gonna create something called your Fit Score. Tell us more about it. So Fit Score is something that you know we've been collaborating on. And like I said, it, it was, or like he said, it was from the basis of good to great, understanding that we can we can test people on certain doable exercises, right? And make it so that it is based on the person and not necessarily the weight, right? Which we'll see a lot of gyms do. They're, they're working off of, you have to get to this weight, you have to get to this weight. But what about working on the percentage of what your weight is? Correct, so I think um, when you meant doable, you mean like SMART. So if we yeah. define the acronym of SMART, um, specific, yeah. measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So we're coming up with 15 to 20 data points that anybody comes in day one, or even our veteran members, we're gonna measure them, all right? And then we will basically have levels, and the levels are fun, they're like gold, you know, platinum, silver, diamond, astronaut, astronaut, rock star, superhero, Olympian. So based upon the overall 20 measurement points, we get your average number. So if my number is 6.2, I'm far away from being a 10.0. So we're gonna do benchmark days every two months in our facility for the entire membership, and that way you have an opportunity to improve your overall average score. So if I'm at diamond, which is 5.8, and then on benchmark day, I improved four of my numbers, and now I'm at 6.3, I went from diamond, now I'm in Olympia. So, Wait, so that's why in classes we've had benchmark days? Yes, dude. Oh, I didn't know. It's crazy, groundbreaking, I know. So being the lookout for the big vision idea of driving auction, being a completely benchmark-based facility, and having the metrics to show people their overall change based upon knowing where they started, now they know where they went. Absolutely, and we know where they went to collect the team for sure. Cool, so be on the lookout. Once again, no bulls starting September 12th. You have a month from today to sign up. Be on the lookout on our website and our social media and emails for links to be able to sign up. If you're a member, there's a certain rate. And if you're not a member, you get classes for the month in a facility included. Now, early bird gets the worm is a great saying. Oh, yeah. Is there an early bird special? There is, so if you happen to be a non-member of the gym, um, up until the end of August, you have 179 to sign up for the Noble Challenge and unlimited classes for the month. It's 199 after September 1st. You have about 12 days to sign up for that. The early bird definitely gets the worm, and we have same incentive points for members as well. So if you are interested in getting part of that and understanding what benchmarks look like, and you've never been part of a benchmark-based gym, come see us. Any final points? Come on in. We'll be able to help you out and take you exactly where you want to go. Absolutely, and be on the lookout for future Turf Talk Tuesdays, we'll give you the, uh, the update topic as you come around the bend to next week. All right. As always, we appreciate your time and attention and love. On behalf of Dylan, Haley, and all the team here at Gravity Auction, we wish you an amazing Tuesday. Take care.